Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. If this is your first time here, welcome. Uh, today we're going to talk about, we're gonna kind of continue this whole fundamentals thing that I've got going on. I didn't intend to make a series out of it, but sort of one thing led to another, led to another. So I've talked about uh, pistol stance and presentation. I've talked about uh, grip. Let's talk about trigger control and finger placement. So let's get into it. So if you like this sort of content, please hit that like, share, and subscribe button. Sharing the videos is the best way and easiest and most free way to help the channel. It brings it out into people's view that may not normally see it because YouTube, uh, YouTube would just show would just assume never show anybody my videos. So uh, you can also support the channel financially if you'd like to, and that is by becoming a member or buying from any of my affiliates, any, any of the companies I'm an affiliate with. You can go right to my website, which is linked down below, go to the page with all the affiliates on it and shop from those links. It costs you nothing extra, but it helps out the channel. I do appreciate it. So I've talked about grip before. Grip, I've often said, is the most underrated and under talked about fundamental. However, you can, you can, get good shot placement and good follow-up shots with poor trigger control and poor finger trigger finger placement if you have exceedingly good grip and exceedingly good recoil mitigation with that said most people do not have exceedingly good grips and exceedingly good uh, recoil mitigation so it ends up being a whole package if your uh, trigger finger placement is incorrect if your uh, trigger pull has a deficiency you have maybe not an optimal grip then one plus one plus one equals bad shots bad shots uncontrollable shots things like that now I'm not going to get into correct trigger finger placement because there's no such thing uh, contrary to a bunch of fucking people on the internet, there's no such thing as correct trigger finger placement. Why is that? That is because where your trigger finger lands on the trigger is going to wholly depend on the size of your pistol, to the size of your hand, to the length of your finger. It's going to wholly depend on that. There is no one-size-fits-all approach to trigger finger placement. However, there is a good starting point, and that's what we're going to talk about as far as trigger finger placement today. And that good starting point is splitting the index, the very end index pad of your finger with the trigger. So having the trigger in the middle of your index finger, your index finger pad. Um, that is a good starting point. However, if your finger is a little longer or a little shorter, you may have to move in, you may have to move out, you may have to move in even further. Guys like um, Pat McNamara, he, he pulls his pistols with the crook of his finger, right? He says it's a vice. He says it's a vice. Now for him, that probably works very well. And he is a great shooter, so it obviously does. Uh, for other people, it's not so much. So again, it's going to wholly depend on the size of the pistol, to the size of your hand, to the length of your finger. Um, and then other things could go into that as well as arthritis and whatnot, but that's, you, you, can't, you can't teach that. That's something you have to work around. So starting, starting point being splitting the index finger pad, right? And pulling straight back. You do not want to pull this way and you do not want to pull this way. You will deviate, especially if you do not have an optimal grip, you will deviate the gun this way or this way. 
as you're pulling the trigger. I'm, of course, exaggerating it. Maybe for some people I'm not, but you will deviate the gun this way or this way. You can have that also if you are putting the incorrect part of your finger on the trigger. So if you are too deep and you try to pull straight back, you can see what that does to my gun. And I'm not exaggerating that. Just by doing that, my gun moves a little bit. However, if I do just the tip of my finger, the opposite is not true. So pulling straight back, not this way, not this way, and not having too much or too little finger. All of those do matter. They do matter. I'm going to reiterate though that it can be masked. Deficiencies in your trigger finger and, and trigger pull can be masked by an excellent grip and excellent recoil mitigation. So be aware of that. So next is going to be the follow-up shot. Follow-up shot being after you have pulled the trigger and not disturbed the pistol. And that is, the, that's by the way, that's the secret of shooting. So the secret of shooting is to put your sights on target and when you pull the trigger, to not disturb the attitude of the gun. That's it, that's the, that's the secret of shooting. That's all you have to do. I know it sounds oversimplified, but that truly is it. All you have to do is put your sights on target, and when you pull the trigger, when that projectile leaves the barrel, you have not disturbed the alignment of that gun. That's all you have to do. So, we've talked about now, pulling that trigger straight back. Do not disturb the gun. It cycles. What you do not need to do is come all the way off either. I've seen people actually come out and actually tap their finger against the front of the trigger guard and then reapply their finger, then have to come back into the wall and then break the wall. Or guys that come all the way out, right, till the mushy part of the trigger, way beyond the wall, and then come back to the wall and fire. Oftentimes that looks like this, right? And they end up jerking the gun because they're not just coming out to the wall and firing again. So in real life, that will look something like this. Draw, come out, present, and my finger goes right back to the wall. No, watch. See how much of the trigger I still let off of? And I'm right back to the wall. You get real clean follow-up shots that way. You don't have so much travel in your finger that you risk disturbing the gun. And you don't have it pinned back waiting for the next shot to then release, come out to the wall, and then shoot again, which were, which is the next part. So this, where you pin it, and then come out to the wall, and then do your second shot, we're gonna try to not do that. We're gonna try to not do that. We're going to try to, again, fire, and come right back out to the wall. Fire and come right back out to the wall. Not all the way off, not, and when I mean all the way off, I don't mean just off the trigger. I mean all the way out to the beginning of the trigger stroke. We're gonna try to not do that. Ooh, that one, that was, that was a rough one. Lastly, when I'm pulling the trigger. The last part here is when I'm pulling the trigger. I am pulling the trigger, uh, not for this demonstration, but when I'm training, I am pulling this trigger right at the end of my presentation. So as I push out, my finger starts drawing in to the wall. So it'll look something like this, right? As soon as my sights are flat and I have my sight on target, I am at the wall, ready to fire. So as soon as you get out there, as soon as that's flat and your, your sights are on target, your finger should be at the wall, ready to break.
push out, prep, 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 prep. And then right at the end there is the break. And then when you, when right after the slide cycles, you want to get right back out to the wall. Just like that. Notice. Get a closer up view of it. I'm no longer aiming at the target, by the way. I'm just aiming at the backstop. Notice my finger is not doing this. Just out to the wall. Oh, out. So unfortunately, without the slide cycling automatically, this is a hard thing to practice at home. Um, because without the slide cycling, there is no wall to come back out to. So this is something that unfortunately does take ammo, does take money, does take time uh, out on the range to get better at. However, you can practice at home by having your pistol ready to fire, you can have, and just come out and just practice right at the end. Boom. 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 And you can practice that. So to recap real quick, your trigger finger placement is completely dependent on you, on the size of your hand, to the size of your gun, to the length of your finger. Don't let anybody tell you, you have to put your finger in a, a very specific place because that is not true from one person to the other. The trigger pull should be straight back, straight back, not deviate right or left. And if you find yourself curled in too far or not enough, you may also deviate the gun right or left. Have the trigger prepped as soon as you get out to a flat presentation, right at the wall, fire, and bring your finger right back out to the wall, prepping for the next shot, fire, and you're good. Of course, this takes all takes time, money, practice, and you know, the willingness to put some sort of effort into your protection and the defense of your freedom. So that's it. Thanks for watching, everybody. Hopefully you got something out of this. Uh, don't forget to hit like, share, and subscribe. Hit that notification bell. Again, sharing things is the best way to get the channel out there. I'm trying to hit 50,000 50, subscribers this year, currently sitting nearly 37. So I got a little ways to go. Hopefully you guys can help me out with that. I do appreciate it. Thank you to all my members out there. Thank you to all the Ko-Fi supporters. Thank you to everybody out there who stuck with my channel for the last more than a decade, 11 years. I appreciate all of you, and we'll talk to you later.